and welcome back to the table. It's my vacation time, so I'm trying to do a game a day, and I wanted to pick up where we left off doing scenario three. This is easy peasy. Well, we'll find out how easy it is. Uh, what we've got here, this is Carrington, June 12, 1944. Airborne forces were theorized to be elite shock forces that would be used for just a few days and then withdrawn for refit and preparation for the next operation. Before D-Day, they were told they needed to give three days of hard fighting. The beach heading north to capture the port of uh, Cherbourg, the task of capturing Carrington fell to the 101st. Taking this town was necessary to link the Utah and Omaha beaches. Elements of the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment would attack, including Easy Company. Through a night march, 2nd Battalion had been positioned to attack Carrington from the southwest, thereby cutting off the main retreat route of any defenders in Carrington. Carrington, Carrington. Someone will have to put a little pronunciation guide for me on that. I've been playing games with Carrington, Carrington, Carrington and I still don't know how to say it. Before the attack, Colonel von der Heide of the German 6th Parachute Regiment had made the fateful decision to withdraw from the town and leave only a token rear guard force, a decision for which he would eventually face a formal inquiry, but be acquitted. At the commencement of the attack, there was a tough moment in which the lead elements of Easy Company were pinned down in the road by machine gun fire. Lieutenant Winters, in command of Easy, stood up in the road yelling, Move out and get going! Later he would say, Here is where the discipline paid off. The men got the message and they moved out. Once in town, they also had to deal with some accurate prearranged mortar fire, but the pre battle withdrawal of the majority of German troops had changed the situation. Taking, taking, Carenton, Karen, Karen, taking this city turned out to be relatively easy. Well, we'll find out. What I did was, for this scenario, I went ahead and got rid of the uh, artillery barrage. It looks like I got one 80 millimeter artillery, so like a, a heavy mortar, but just one. And instead, I exchanged it for two more infantry squads. So you get two more decoys and two squads. So I went ahead and put two squads. So much like scenario two, I went ahead and just loaded the Germans up here on this front line. So instead of layering them back within the city and making the Americans come forward, we're just going to come here. How realistic is that to the setup of, of the actuality? I, it might not be very accurate. But the last time I did a city clearing, I'll just show you here. Last time I did a city clearing where I put all the defenders you know, in layers, the American player just went in and just just wiped it so so easy um so i'm hoping that with forcing the american player to have to come out through some of these clearings and fire for suppression this just putting them all on the line here would be a lot stronger or a lot, a lot more defensible for the german player they do have a machine gun team here, a weapon team, and then the rest of this is infantry. I'm assuming they mean for them to be airborne, which is cool. Uh, the, the counters themselves don't really lend towards letting you know if it's a, what exactly it is. You just look at the numbers and match it up, but the story says airborne. And then, of course, we've got our Screaming Eagles, I'm assuming. The Screaming Eagles are here. Uh, Easy Company, Dick Winters is in here somewhere. So what's different this time around? Well, nothing really is different for the German player other than the addition of a weapon team. And it's the same stats as uh, the weapon teams I have for the Americans. And the Americans have brought two weapon teams, two machine guns, and their stats are amazing. So the Americans go first. They are definitely going to want to put some suppression on that machine gun. Machine guns are just absolutely devastating in this game, as I imagine they would be. And then um, we got a lot of 5-3 defenders for the German player. So yeah, these are definitely a lot stronger than the 4-1s we have been dealing with. The only other additional thing for the American players is now they've got some of these airborne units with a um, anti-weapon, anti-armor weapon. But uh, they're not really going to use that, I wouldn't think. The, the small value, I think it is. But they have a little superscript here of plus 1, which unless I'm totally reading it wrong from the book... It means that they get to add uh, one proficiency when they do hand-to-hand. -hand. So I've got two of those. So i got a couple of really tough hand-to-hand -to -hand fighting units. That's why I've brought them back a little bit. 
I, I would guess that maybe I'd want them forward. That way when I do suppress, they can just jump right in in combat. So why don't we do that? Now I put the two weapon teams over here because I thought I would clear one side, maybe just put the occasional suppression over here, but then we would definitely like clear this side because it's only three, clear this side, uh, and then focus on, on these guys. I've only got six turns to do it. I would anticipate I could probably do well, but we'll see. Now, one thing though, I did not really stack up the units only because, you know, if you hit one, one stack, they all become suppressed. And I was like, well, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So we'll just do this turn to suppress, maybe take out some elements here. And then over time, we'll just get more bold. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but I anticipate that the Germans will hold out much, much stronger this time around. Now, for this occasion, not for this specifically, but I have been working on, I'll show you, on painting up some Airborne. Um, now, I've been experimenting. This is Contrast Paints by Games Workshop. And um, after seeing some other people paint stuff, I've got some other colors to try. That's mostly what I've been doing is trying to find the colors I want to use, and then I'll worry about accuracy of painting. Like, I've messed up the leg wraps here on the boots. So there's a few things I've got a lighter shade of brown to use. But these contrast paints, I think, are pretty, they work out pretty good, I think. Um, so there's attempt at one of the Airborne. And then here, because this came from the Band, Band of Brothers bolt action set, I don't really play a bolt action, but I like the figures. Um, but here's a Panzer Grenadier, and he's got the raincoat garb on. And again, this is all contrast paints. Uh, so the flesh, skin color everything uh, shades really good like it's supposed to I think and that's the the 28 millimeter bolt action and then before I had even more colors this is one of the first ones all I had was their military green so I painted these are 15 mil and uh, applying some of the techniques of experimentation so that's not not bad I mean they didn't wear that color green but you could use that for like pants and mix it with stuff but anyway then here's a, a smaller airborne so again, just using the contrast paints, um, mostly because it paints really quickly. It helps give some definition. I have to go back in, like fix some binoculars and things like that. But I've just bought a whole bunch of contrast paints lately. So mostly it's just been figuring out what colors I want to use, you know, like what color for the weapons and things like that. But yeah, in 15 mil, these, these little dudes turn out pretty good. Not too shabby. And then here's uh, one of the German paratroopers. This was a 15 mil Fallschirmjäger. And uh, I should have got one that had one of the fancy hats. But yeah, so even in 15 millimeter, I went with 15, I like 15 millimeter scale just because one, it's almost like you could stack them on here. But then I did that once I had another game where I you was using figures for representing the troops. And people said, yeah, that kind of sucked because when it's top down, you can't really tell what the figure is. And then you can't really lay them down either. And then you have to get the camera real close. So these are kind of small enough for other things. But uh, basically for like my local store had these, it was like $27 and you got like, oh, just bumped the camera. You got like, you spent like $27 and you got like 50 figures for a, a company. So I was like, yeah, I'll just buy a bunch of these and paint them up and do some uh, skirmish gaming in 15 mil. So I still have a lot of stuff to paint, but hey, I'm on vacation, so I'll paint and play. Okay, so that's, that's enough of that intro. Thanks for letting me just, gosh, waste nine minutes of your time. Um, okay, well, here we go. Let's play. Americans go first. Let me move these little guys out of the way. I've also changed the video quality back up to the high def and 60p, 60 frames. So, uh, I don't know, it's, you can tell me if you like it or if the other one's better. I was only doing, uh, I did a little less quality just for quicker rendering time because I'm impatient. But if this looks nice and better and you enjoy it, I'll just keep filming like this. All right, Americans go first. Um, we have an Operations 5 of 2 to 5 for the Americans. German have operations range of three to four. So we're gonna start here with our good friend machine gun. And 
Um, actually, I could probably start here. It doesn't matter. And we'll just fire straight up and see if we can get... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's def... Yeah, no problem there. So we're going to try and suppress their machine gun first. Even if I can just score one suppression. So this is... To, to my understanding, this is all stone buildings up here. So they are defended really, really well. So it's going to be minus two to their firepower. So they're going to actually be hitting on sixes, not adjacent or anything else. So I think it's just going to be right on a six. So I'm going to green for the Americans here. My son talked me into buying one of these fancy leather dice rolling thing so I thought well we'll try it out okay so I just want to make sure I am on sixes it's amazing what you forget when you think you have it um, it's not proficient firepower or anything like that I'm not adjacent not in the open nobody's moving so bada bing bada boom I'm pretty sure it's just minus two for the stone buildings so they're gonna hit on a six they roll a three now these Germans are tougher, well, at least this one in the build, yeah, they all are. Uh, that four plus the three is a seven, so no casualty. However, they do get one level of suppression and you are marked used. And that was mostly what I was worried about. I wanted to put some suppression there. I could put full suppression on it. Um, and really that's about the best thing to do, full suppression, because at the end of the turn, just one level of suppression comes off. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go ahead and use this weapon team to put full suppression on them. And I almost need a separate camera for the dice tray. Hey, if anybody out there knows how to run a multiple camera setup where I can push buttons on a thing and have it swap cameras so I can have a dedicated uh, dice roll camera. Like seriously, if anybody knows some good camera setups tell me all about it all right rolled another three okay so now we've got fully suppressed so this is laying the groundwork for future turns where we can move up and he'll be marked used this might not be the smartest choices but that's the choices i'm going with and then uh we're going to I mean, eventually we're going to fire all across here, but we're going to go ahead and shoot with this guy. Yeah, see, I, I think what we'll do is we'll move some units up. That way I can take advantage of breaking through because uh, Woods is two movement points, right? So one, two, three. So like I can move up, but I can't jump into the building. But if I was here, I can move out and attack. So what we'll do is let's attack with this gentleman here. Um, now his firepower is six, so he's going to hit on a four, and that's a seven, so that's a miss. And this one will fire, okay, so he's going to hit on a four. Yeah, and that's a five. Okay, so they, they didn't do so good. And I'm going to go ahead and move him up. So that's going to be four movement points. Right? Well, three, because he's here. One, two, three. Uh, could they shoot? They could, honestly. They could shoot in there to hit the guy moving uh, for opportunity fire, but I don't think it's really worth it for them because they'd be hitting on threes, whereas if they just fire, they're going to hit on fives. So that would be five U.S., uh, five units that have gone. Now... I'm going to save the machine gun, um, make that on like the last set of firing, only because he is fully suppressed, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to be able to shoot. I'd have to roll really low. I'd have to roll a two or lower for him, and we definitely want to get up there. But i gotta, I got to lay some su more suppression to move these people up safely. So what they're going to do is fire into this hex, because now there's two. See, and I hate stacking folks, but, you know, Let's do it. So it's five minus one. They will also be hitting on fours because the woods only give one. So roll it. And that's a seven. So we'll put a used on you. 
they'll do the same thing. So they, they're going to be hitting on a four. Oh, in the tray, please. Also a five. Close, but no cigar. So that's two. And the Germans have to do three. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just, um, let's roll for this side. Let's do someone over here. We're going to try, I'm going to take this far guy here and try to suppress right there. So they're going to hit on a four. And he gets a one. And that is always a suppression, uh, regardless of your a number to hit. And if you were adjacent, that would even be, oops, he's used. But if you were adjacent, that would also be a reduction. So there we go. All right, that is, uh, Germans can do four. Okay, so let's fully suppress this guy here. So that's going to be a four. Nine. Okay, they didn't get fully suppressed. Okay. Um, Americans, what are we going to do? We didn't think this out very well, did we? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can shoot straight up here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's right along the line. So I think he's fine. And there's actually two units in there. So we'll start with this guy. So he'll shoot up here first. So it's proficiency six. So here he's hitting on fours. The battle of the fours right now. And that's a four. So that's going to put a used on you. And that's going to put suppressed on you. And then we'll have one unit here shoot. So they're going to need a four. Make it a three. So you are fully suppressed. I know that tray is kind of nice, but I'm just knocking stuff around. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Only one of them's used. So what we could do, and he can't shoot anybody else from here. He can't, can't see. So, um, how many was that I did so far? Was that only two? So we're going to go here. This will be number three. Yeah, we got to shoot here. He can't, he can't, he can't, he can all right, so we're going to see if we can just put a suppression on that guy. So they'll need a four. Nope. A lot of gunfire, though. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. That's three. That's the um, American. Oh, wait. Did I put used? Yeah. I had to move this guy up. You know, I could, you know, I forgot. I could have actually, when I moved a unit up here, I could have turned that into a salt fire. Um, and I did forget that as an option. So I, it's not a misplay. It's kind of a misplay, but it's not a wrong rule. It's just a, I didn't take advantage of op fire. So what I am going to do is I will actually move this guy up here and I'm going to have him op fire. Now, Opfire is going to use this proficiency number to start with, so it's going to be a 5. I would check to see if I was adjacent, and there are a couple modifiers I could get for that. So I'm not adjacent, I wasn't marked Opfire, and I'm not spending any command points. So there's no changes to his 5, but now there's no other modifiers either. It's just going to be the 5 minus 2. So he'll hit on a 3. Now at this point... Um, oops, oh, come on here. That bounces a little too well. Oops, sorry, camera. A nine. Yeah, just to, just to put some suppression on there, just to make him possibly not activate. So they moved up into the woods, firing out. Daka, daka, daka. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and move him up. And I think that's four. This will be five people. So he'll do the same thing. So he's going to go for needing a three to hit. Five. Well, we're not doing so hot. 
Now I'm going to put them on the bottom because they're used and that unit is suppressed. So I might be off on my count, but I think we're okay. I think that's five units that have done something that time around. Or even if it's four, that's still within my command range. So we'll go back to the German player. Now the German player can do three to four and he's got three that can do something. Uh, so with the machine gun, first they're going to see if they can activate the machine gun. I bet if I just hold this, eight, nope. So they're used. And then uh, we'll check for this unit there. They're gonna activate on a roll of a one. We got a six, so they're done. And now that last German unit doesn't actually have to roll because he's already got a morale of 10. He's gonna see if he can shoot into this area and score some hits, maybe fully suppress a unit so they carry some suppression over or make it so he can't act at all uh, and then possibly suppress the other unit. So he's a five and they're minus, so it's a four. Nope. Okay, done. Okay, what is the American gonna do? Well, the American has a unit here, has this one. Let's check that one there, it's suppressed. So it's going to activate on a 6 or lower, roll to 10. So guess what? It is not going to activate. So we'll just stack that whole unit there is used. And I've got him. Uh, we're going to swing him around because that way it, we can start to make a push. One, two, three, four, five. So he's going to start one, two, three, four, five. And if I was playing with decoy markers, he'd probably be marked as a decoy. But it's just me. No decoys for just me. And that will be the end of turn one. So I will clear this up and we'll come back for the start of turn two. Well, I lied. I should check for route first. I didn't think about route only because I don't think anybody meets the requirements for route because they're not, nobody is in the same hex as an enemy. We're not adjacent to an enemy that's not in melee. And then it says they are in the open ground and within five hexes in line of sight of a unit not in melee. Uh, so they don't meet any of those requirements. So I, I did kind of skip over route phase, but only because I thought, you know, there's no routing to have to be checked for. So we'll just clean up and uh, come back. So I did I did kind of sort of forget. And then there's no melee either, so we're just going right into recovery. We are back, and again, we're gonna start with the Americans. And again, my thinking was just to try and suppress, like really focus on this side first, and then kind of swing in this way. So we're gonna go ahead and start by trying to fully suppress that weapon team right there and then maybe put a little bit of suppression on these guys. That way as I move people up, hopefully they don't trigger opportunity fire. I would love to get this guy suppressed too. That way he's not shooting across and like this guy's got a little bit of suppression, um, but I don't think he can see over there through the buildings. So yeah, it'd be good, but that's, that's a lot of suppression to make that happen. And I'm on turn two of six. All right, so let's start with this here weapon team. Keep finding my little terrain nuggets falling onto the, yeah, you, I glued stuff onto these little bases, but they fall off. So I'm getting gravel on my map. All right, anywho, let's start with this weapon team. He's gonna fire straight up and it's eight. Uh, stone building is two, so they're gonna hit on a six. That's a six, which is good. Fully suppressed their weapon team. Uh, makes sense, there's a, a lot of fire going on there. Heavy, heavy fire. Then we're gonna take this weapon team and suppress that one over, or attempt, uh, but that's gonna be on a six as well. A three, okay, cool. So again, there and there. And then we'll move this guy up. So he's gonna come up. So he's in some protection. He's gonna try and lay some suppression there. He's gonna use his proficient firepower, so that's a five. Um, 
minus two for the building, so he's hitting on a three, not a four. Into the tray. A three. Okay, good. Uh, that's perfect. I mean, fully suppressing would be great. Unfortunately, that was one of my dudes who excels at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but... All right, so that is three units right there. I almost need like a little tracker to help me keep track of how many I've activated. Yeah, I can see the used, but from turn to turn, sometimes I forget how many I did. Um, so let's do this. I'll just use a die eight. So, so far we've activated three. Yeah, you can see that right there. There we go. Cool. That's my how many I've activated this particular segment. Now, this is where I could begin the assault and try to push up. But what I'm going to do is take this guy right here and try to put a little suppression there. I mean, granted, they can still fire. It's just that i got to force them to make a morale check roll. And if I'm lucky, they fail, which would prevent them from opportunity firing as we cross the open. Again, I really like this. It's you as a commander have to decide, you know, when do you push your luck? Like, how suppressed is suppressed? So we're going to shoot here. They need a four to put a level of suppression. And it's a one. Ooh, okay. So let's look. This might be great. Um, they have, well, no, it's a four. It's modified four. So if I add that four plus the one, that's a five. But they needed a four to hit. So it's not casualties. That stone building, that one point of difference between a stone building and a wood building just saved their lives. So their heads are down, but they are not, they didn't take casualties. That would have been a casualty had that been wood building. So they are very fortunate. All right, so this is, I, as it stands, to, to clear those buildings, we're going to have to get in there and hand-to-hand -hand our way through. Uh, my weapon team, the two weapon teams I have by firepower alone are the only weapon or the only units on the board that will be able to actually cause uh, reduction of troops um, by firepower. So these infantry are going to have to suppress and then move up. Okay, so that's been four units that have done something. Uh, so yeah, now we could begin the assault. I'm going to try and move up here in the open. One. Now, at this point, you could decide, okay, are you going to shoot? Um, a couple of them will. Th yeah, because when I get here, so here's how it's going to work. Um, this guy will shoot because if I move up here, he can't shoot through the building. And this guy will shoot as well, or attempt, because his modifiers to hit will be the same whether he's here or here. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, this guy, he can shoot here. So what I'll do is I'll just check all three of them to see if we can just stop right here. I guess it might be better if we could stop them right adjacent. Mm. But we're going to try for back here. Stop them in the open. All right, so first of all, we're going to check this unit here. They are suppressed, so they're going to activate on a five. So we're being brave. Ugh, come on. In the little dice tray here. Eight. Okay, so they said nope. Then the next one over. Two. They will fire. And this, this could be bad. Uh, but that's why I tried to suppress, was to prevent this from happening. Um, but they have a firepower of five. Yeah, so this is going to be really bad. Now, this is opportunity fire, so I'm actually using their three. They're not adjacent. Um, what were the three? Adjacent. They're not marked as op fire, and we're not using a command point. So they're going to start with a three. But they're in four hexes and in the open moving, so that's actually plus four. So that's going to give them a seven. That's actually, this might stop the assault cold. Um, they rolled a five, so it is a suppressed. 
luckily it wasn't enough to cause casualties. So, but here's the thing. Uh, well, I'm going to check this one too. I because he's he's also opportunity firing. So what we'll do is get him too. Then we'll make the morale check to see if he continues. So if he hits, this guy gets marked used. And now I and the book did say just as many units that can fire who want to fire go ahead. So he'll go ahead and fire as well. Uh, but again, it's a seven. It's a seven because they're a proficiency of three. And then there was no other penalties I'm aware of. And then um, you add four because he's within four hexes moving in the open. And it's a five. Okay, so that's... Well, I should have went with the other guy. But that's okay because, again, no casualties happened. They've drawn some fire and they're used. And that will, well, they're not used. I get to roll. I get to roll now to see if they continue with their assault. So if I roll a two or a one, oh, oh, I was rolling with my die eight. What? Oh, that was silly. I grabbed the thing I was using to track how many actions I did. So of course a die eight is gonna roll pretty good. <sighs> Well, I'm not gonna erase that. We're just gonna, we're gonna call that. That's the Murphy's Law of Warfare. What can go wrong goes wrong. All right, but to be fair, I should roll the die eight to see if they pass their morale check. But here we go. Here's their green die ten. But if I roll a one or a two, they're good. And they roll a ten, so they say we're done. They said nope. The Germans cheated, and we're done there. Okay, so that that would have been all five of the American units. Then the Germans are going to go. Now, there, I thought I had checked. Right, there's no line of sight from that to that because it cuts through the building and that, that cuts through the building. So he... Oh, yeah, he's used because he did a thing. Doop. No, wait, no, he didn't. It was this one. He's used. Okay, so he could sh shoot. Now, they won't be considered moving because they have stopped, but still in the open. Uh, they would hit on a five. Now, if he rolls a one, yeah, so we're going to try. If that German unit rolls a one against a unit in the open, that's going to be casualties. Uh, otherwise, it, it won't. Mm, so that's probably not a good use of his firepower because they're already fully suppressed and stopped, and, you know, there's a 10% chance of causing casualties. So what we'll do is we will, we'll go with him. Because I can do four, that'll just be the rest of the Germans. So we'll go ahead. One, we'll see if he can fire at them. Because he has a really good chance of causing casualties. But he needs a two. And he rolls a ten. So he says, nope. Nine. Okay, then down here, look at all these juicy stacks. So um, I actually, let's see if we can put some fully suppressed down here. So it's a five, but minus one for the woods. They are suppressed. Let's see if they even want to activate. So they're going to activate on a five. They say, nope. They say, our heads have been pinned down. All right, so I'll just put these two here. So five firepower minus one, it's a four. Ten is a miss. And then that unit... Eight. Wow. Well, I'm not rolling so good today for either side. All right. So Americans. Well, see now though, because they're all used, now would be the time to bring people up. So yeah, he's suppressed in the open, but check this out though. Oh, one. Yeah, I was going to go around, but then that would have been adjacent to two. And I don't want that. That's final, final opportunity fire. We're not going to do that. Uh, one, two. Okay, so now we're going to check for final opportunity fire for this guy. So first things first, though, is it is that possible? they got to get a two. That's why I like to fully suppress. But now they're going to get a two, eight. So they do not fire, and they will move in. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just... I'll just put this here. Boop, they're done. Now I could move someone else in there. 
I could also move someone up here and try to assault there. Or, well, no, yeah, uh, this this side of the board, we we could probably try to move some people up. So that was one activation. Yeah, let's let's get some uh, let's get some airborne in here. One, one, two. So we're gonna move here. One, two. Check for final opportunity fire with that German unit. They're gonna activate on a five or less. They roll a one. So they're gonna fire. Uh, they now this is could be bad, but they're going to um, get a three for proficient plus one because they are adjacent. Oh, this could be very bad. So it's already at four. Then um, the target is adjacent. So that's going to be another plus three in general, right? And because they're moving in the open, do I add four for that as well? So that's like, that's like four, that's like an 11. Oh man, that could just be terrible. I might have just caused significant harm to this unit because they passed their morale check. That's why fully suppressed is so good, boys and girls. Some suppression is okay. Fully suppressed is great. Just like my prom date said. Okay, so let's go one for the final. Well, for op firing an adjacent unit is plus one. So I brought it to four, plus three more, so that makes it seven, and then plus four, because they're moving in the open. I think that's 11. That's really bad, so let's roll a 10. A five, okay, so now here's the thing. Uh, that four plus the five I rolled is less than the 11, so yeah, they were not suppressed enough, so that means they are fully suppressed with some casualties. Now though, we get to check to see if they want to continue uh, the assault. So they're gonna roll, so what I should have done is now we're gonna have to come back and fire in and, and do some more suppression. Okay, um, so now they continue on a roll of a two or a one. A two. They're gonna do it, so they move in regardless. Wow, okay, that was pretty brave of them. All right, so before we move up, this unit is gonna shoot up here and try to put fully suppressed on them. So they're gonna be hitting on a four, because their firepower is six minus two, so that's a four. Uh, nope, and then that's another unit here two done. Uh, then this one will shoot up and try to suppress and they're hitting on a four. Okay, that did it. That's what I should have done was try to fully suppress before going in. Okay, that's the third unit. Um, him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Volt. Yeah, Volt as my son would say. So now we're gonna cross that road. One, two, three, four, five. Let's, let's do it. One, two, three. Now it doesn't trigger opportunity fire from them because they're used, but you get final opportunity fire from him. Now let's see if he does. Now he's gonna activate on a one. If he rolls a one, those guys are, are screwed. Oh, man, okay. So I think it's like the same thing. They're hitting on like an 11 because they get plus one for being adjacent with opportunity fire. Then it's plus three because it's adjacent. So that brings it up to seven and then four because they're in the open. Uh, yeah, again, this could be really bad. So the, German, or the American player wants them to roll really, really, really high. Roll to six. Um, that six plus four, it's still going to be casualties and fully suppressed, though. <sighs> I said easy, but uh, not so easy for easy company. And uh, But now they're going to roll to see if they continue. So if they roll a two, they're in, like Flynn. Nope. 
So they're done. Stuck out in the open with casualties. They're bleeding, screaming for mom. Mama! And that would be number four. Uh, I think all the Germans have been activated. So I've got two Americans left. Oh, I got a used marker out here for some reason. So what I'll do is probably just go ahead and finish out my activations. So what we're going to do is, is the same thing. One, two... What are the odds that that German unit will roll another one? What are the odds? What are the odds? Oh, whoa. Okay, so... That's really bad for the Americans. That, uh, yeah, because I'm going to roll one die and that will affect that stack. Holy effing cow. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Uh, they need to roll a 10. Okay, they roll a 6. That's still bad because um, that is going to, I think, actually wipe out this unit because now you're affecting the whole stack. 6 plus their casualty number. Well, their casualty number is 5, but they still need an 11 to hit. Uh, so I believe that actually wipes that unit out. They're dead out in the open in the street, just brrr. And then this guy, he gets the full flip and fully suppressed job and is stuck. Okay, so we're going to go again. One, two. I know what they say, if it... If, if you do something and you keep doing it and it doesn't work, just keep doing it because at some point it will. Okay, so what are the odds that the German player will roll another one? Here we go. I'm shaking it. Okay. <gasps> the American player was having a heart attack there for a moment. Uh, they, I guess they just used the bodies of their fallen comrades as protection there and crawled up. Okay. Now we're going to check for routing. I, I, uh, yeah, that's pretty dramatic happening there. Okay. Oh, sorry, camera. Gosh darn, the camera's just low enough for me to bump it on occasion. Sorry. All right, so we're going to check for routing. Now, Americans are going to check for routing first. And that could be bad because this unit passed because he's got a 10. That unit is at a 9. So that's the only American I got to check for. Because uh, he's not adjacent. Is he in the open, though, to other units not in melee? I think you're going to have to make a check. Because if, if um, I believe this guy can see him, yeah. Okay, so we'll check this one first. At least he can fall back if he fails. So he's going to roll a 9 or less. Okay, so he's fine. I don't know if that's necessarily where he wants to be. Okay, now that unit is in melee so they gotta roll a nine or less to stay because they're not oh they're fully suppressed oh <gasps> if they don't roll a two they're gonna route before they even fight so they made it to the battle but let's see if they stay oh this is epic okay so they make it okay the americans are done with their route checks because he's got a 10. okay now for the uh germans oh uh, this guy's got to check too. Oh, he, yeah, he's fully suppressed. So he's fully suppressed. So he's going to do a two because he's out in the open and they're not in melee. So he could fall back. He might have to fall back one. So he's going to roll a two or he'll have to fall back. All right. Well, he stays put. Okay. All right. Now we're going to check for the Germans. And that guy is fully suppressed. So he needs to roll a 2 or he's out of there. He rolled a 7, so he's out. And they surrender. Okay, same thing here. Now, they're partially suppressed, but he's got to roll a 5 or less. And so they make it. So they're going to fight it out. They're going to fight it out. All right, and then here, they are fully suppressed. So he needs to roll a one, or he's out. He rolls a five. Okay, so they're out. All right, well, I 
I don't know necessarily that that went well for the Americans, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, uh, now we're going to do the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's just basically two rolls comparing proficiency to proficiency. Uh, that's not my dude with the plus one proficiency for hand to hand. So we'll do the Americans first. So if I remember right, let me double check real quick the hand to hand. But I'm pretty sure it was just you make two rolls, compare for proficiency, uh, how many hits and you apply. But I'm going to double check that real quick. All right, yeah, so the rules are saying you just roll your two die 10 and you check against your uh, firepower, not your proficient firepower, and then each hit will be a reduction against your opponent, or you know, if you've got multiple, you can assign the, the step losses, but it's just uh, one versus one here. So I'll, I'll check for the American first. I'll just roll both die 10s. The, uh, proficiency of six, so that's two hits, and then the German player, same thing, so they could eliminate each other here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and roll. Now he's got a proficiency of five. Uh, he did get one success. So that actually wipes out both. Since they were already wounded and then he took two hits. So he's wounded. Uh, there's nobody there. Now let me check here. Because if I remember, routing did take place first, right? Yep, you route and then it's melee. Okay, so that's good. That, that brings us to recovery. What an interesting round that was, or turn. So that's going to bring us to turn three. I'm going to advance at my tracker. All right, I'm going to just be right back after I clear the board. All right, so this is top of turn three. U.S. op range is two to five. Okay, well, we got to work on this side of, of things now. So we're going to have a weapon team. Now, it says weapon teams... They can't shoot into a hex with a buddy, but they can shoot through a hex with their buddy. So these guys are out of the way. They've got a nice clean lane of fire. So they're gonna put some fire on there. Uh, so that's a proficiency of eight minus two for the building. So they are hitting on sixes. Suppressive fire on a six, roll of five. Okay, we're off to a good start. Um, you know, what I probably, I'm gonna change that up a little bit since I better hit with these two guys first because they are adjacent and if they hit well enough with their adjacent bonuses they might suppress and cause casualties and I could work on suppressing that part there so now that the Americans are in the buildings let's take advantage of that that might be the better thing to do so yeah I got the used there so that's one one used Let's take advantage of the American positioning. So we're gonna go ahead here. Uh, but again, six plus three because it's adjacent, uh, that's still a nine. That's a really good number. Uh, a 10, 10 is the only bad number here. Okay, five. Now see, that this is why I should have done this first. Five, a roll of five plus four is nine. Their modified proficiency is a nine. So that actually will reduce and fully suppress. Boop, like that. So that's the second American unit. And then same thing, they're gonna hit on a nine. Oops, uh, since they're adjacent. Oh, I forgot to subtract two because it's still in a stone building. Uh, so it's not, not reduced. Thank you for pointing that out but they are now fully suppressed, which could still be beneficial. All right, now they're gonna shoot, so let's let's check that out. It, um, it's nine because they are adjacent, subtract two because it's fighting from stone building to stone building, so inside the build, I don't know, however you wanna look at it. So that's actually seven. So they need a seven or less. A six, so that does put a suppression. It's a start, it's a start. And that's the third. Uh, let's see, I would love to fully suppress. 
they're not in, really in a position to do much. Their suppression has improved, but they're still still hurting. Um, and these guys could move up. One, two, three. So if we move there, though, at least they'd be in cover. Yeah, we're going to go this way and attack. So one, two, well, one. And this is shooting through the building, right? So he can't, he can't see there. And they are, that's American, so they wouldn't want to do that anyway. I'm sure the Germans would be happy if they did, but I don't think that's a worry now. So then we go two, three, three movement points to get into the building. But now the German player is going to roll to see if he can do a final op fire. So he is fully suppressed. Full suppression is awesome. Yay. Okay. And then they move in. Bloop. And uh, cool. Let's do it. And they don't get to opportunity fire because they are um, in... They got buddies with them. All right, cool. Now, I can move one more. I want to get him out of the open. So let's see if I can at least move him into the safety and then, like, maybe move here. Ah, yeah, they're not really suppressed very well. Can uh, this guy on the end see him, or is he shooting through the stone building? That's so close. All right, let's find the dots. Because if it's, you know, going to shoot through the tip of that building, he can't. Yeah, he's shooting through the stone building. So they're actually out of line of sight. So I could... Uh, what I think I might do with them... Let's see if they can put some more suppressive fire on there. So let's see if they activate. They need a 6. So they're going to activate. They're uh, six. They're hitting on four because they're in a stone building. Nope. So they're probably silly to be right there. Okay, that's the total U.S. operations range of five. Okay. So this German play now. Now here is something. I believe this German unit can move in here, and it won't. It's not going to get final opportunity fire because there's nobody here. If I had like a cap point, I could actually have... Here's where the cap points would be nice. Because you could spend a cap point, I believe, and like one of these units could shoot up here into their hex before they move out of it, before they jump in. But as it stands, he can move right in. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Boom. They're going to move in, and uh, this is going to become a big, big battle here in a moment. So that's one German-German. How many I got left? Two. Okay, so that's all the Germans. Okay, so they can fire adjacent. All right, so let's try it. Now, they got to roll a five to activate. Five or less. They roll a six. Oh, that would have been juicy, juicy, juicy for them. Now, this German, I'm afraid to move adjacent because this is not a suppressed, and they can final op fire, and they actually have pretty good odds of hitting because they would actually have very good odds of hitting and causing damage to everything in that, that hex. So they probably won't. Um, but, yeah, he can't. Can he? It's almost a waste. See, I think they can see past this tree. I don't think. No, he's hitting the tree. Oh, man. You know what? I would really let someone argue that point. I think the laser, yeah, he can shoot past. But it's like if he hits, he can put one level of suppression. And so his fire is kind of wasted. But if I... What if I move back and then assault fire here? So we're going to go one and nothing here can opportunity fire because it's not adjacent, so it's not final opportunity fire. 
He's going to go here for two, three, and then he will salt fire this way. Now, he has to roll a one. He's got to roll a one to hit, but at least from there, he's now in a better defensible position to do something, I think. So we'll go. And they are good at rolling ones. Who knew? All right, yay, Germany. Okay, well, what are the odds? Never tell me the odds. Forget I even asked. I just should know better by now. Okay, there we go. Germany has spoken. All right, so we're going to check for the route phase first. They are in the open, in line of sight of someone who's not in melee, and they need to roll a, a six if they want to stay put. Almost want them to retreat now. They roll a two, so they're steadfast. Um, they are not a. They're not. They're. They are adjacent to someone, but not in the open. Does it have to be? Let me check. Yeah, I think if it's in the open, or if they're just adjacent to someone who's not in melee. So I think they got to make a check to see if they fall back. So, yeah, they're adjacent. Let me make sure. I would pause the camera for this, but the route thing is like right here. They are adjacent to an enemy unit that is not in melee. Right, so they are. So the Americans got to make a check of six or less. They roll a one, so he stays put. So stays put, stays put. They are in the open, but they are, they are in melee. And he's not in line of sight of that guy. So this unit is fine. Uh, this American unit, on the other hand, is fine too, because he's got, oh shoot. I still have American units. Oh, I went right to the row phase because the Germans were done, but I still got Americans to do something with. Hold the phone. I would edit that out, but you know what? I'm hoping people learn from my mistakes, so that's my mistake. I got to finish the Americans. Now, the Americans can have two to five operands, so there's no more Germans left. They're going to go ahead and do stuff. Uh, so first thing I want to do is move a unit right up in here. Three, four. And I believe they get to just roll on into town because you can't fire out because you've got Americans in there. So no final opportunity fire here. So now we've got a huge stack of fight and that's going to happen here. Then we... One, two, three. I'm thinking if I can lay one more level of suppression here then I can just roll this unit in. That's what we'll do. Okay, so firepower six, minus two for stone building, firepower four. Rolled a nine. Okay, so he did not lay down. But we are going to, yeah, we're gonna do it. This guy will do it, because if I can fully suppress him, then only one level of suppression will come off that will make it easier to suppress him later. So. Uh, range is five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we're good. Three. Okay, fully suppressed. So we're not going to take advantage of that situation this turn, but that's going to help prep us for upcoming turns, I think. Yeah, and he's used. And then... <sighs> la, 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 la. Yeah, this weapon team needs to move around now. They only get four movement points, so one, two, three, four. And he's got, they don't assault fire either. So those weapon teams are stacked. They can start shifting now to help that side. Ooh, you know what? No, I take it back. I take it back. We're going to leave him here because I don't know how that's going to turn out. So we'll op fire him. And um, yeah, again. Will he activate? He needs to do something on a six. Yep. I'm just going to move him over here. Get him out of the open. And put it used on him. Boom. All right. Now we would do the morale thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-roll the morale. That could change things drastically because that morale, fake morale thing did not happen. Okay, so this American unit is adjacent to somebody. So they need to roll a six or less. Now I'm nervous, right? The Americans are positioned where I wanted them and they did really well on their morale. But now, now that is all about to change. 
Rolled a four. Okay, so he stays put. Yeah, he's in the open. So he's got check. So he needs to roll a six. Okay, so he's good. Uh, they're now in wood, so they're in cover. And the American units in here are both a morale of 10, so they're good. Okay, so I believe that's all the American route checks. They're good. Now German route checks. This guy is adjacent, but here's the thing. Since I failed, I sh Wait a minute, when did I suppress him? Oh, yeah, I suppressed him with the last activation. I was like, one, two, three. Oh, oh no, he was here. Yeah, I couldn't take advantage of that because if he fails, he's just going to fall back. So let's see what happens if he fails. But if I roll really, really well, he will take some casualties. So let's see here. How does he fail by? A 10. Ooh, the magical 10. All right. Now, if I take... He's... I think he just, he just fails one. I don't think it's a matter if you fail, but he just failed by the largest number. So I think he falls back and he's reduced. And I think he can fall back into here with him because he'll be in cover at that point. So he's got to fall back, but he'll be reduced because he failed by his roll by more than seven. Well, actually, yeah, because he was fully suppressed and then I rolled a 10. So he's... He's, he bails, and then he gets into a hex that offers cover, and it's away from everyone. So in previous games, I pretty much had units surrounded, so even if they failed their, their uh, route roll and had to retreat, they couldn't retreat because they were always moving towards an enemy. Here, it's plenty of places to fall back, so he's just falling back to the first available cover that he's got. But now he's fully suppressed and reduced. So he's hurting. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now, the German unit in here is fully suppressed. So we're going to see if they... Now, the thing is, though, let me check because he's got buddies in there. So it might not work out that way. Let me double check what will happen here. Okay, so just from clarifying and reading the rules, so my understanding is uh, since he has a buddy in here with him, if he fails, he'll retreat out and be fine. If uh, there was no other German unit in there, then he would be eliminated if he failed his check. But here's the thing. Because he's in a melee hex with an enemy, it says that when I make my roll, if I fail the morale check by more than four, then it, they'll get uh, a reduction. They'll be reduced. So there's a chance I can still reduce him and he'll fall out of there reduced. So we'll, let's see. Um, but I roll a morale of one. If I roll a one, he'll stay and fight. I roll a five, and he failed by four. So not only is he reduced, but now he's going to retreat out, and he'll just move here. Because there was a buddy in here providing him some cover fire while he retreats out. And then that puts the Americans at an advantage there for combat. Okay, I think we're good. That makes sense, and thematically, I'm okay with that. So they're used from previously they were used. Okay, now we'll check the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, there's only one hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that's in this location here. So we're gonna roll, I'll, I'll roll the German first, because it's only one unit in there. They're hitting on fives. So that's one hit. Then the Americans are going to get four die ten. I'll just make two sets of, of rolls. And now I'm going to roll them separately because this unit has a plus one to their proficiency with hand to hand. So they're hitting on sixes. So that's one hit. And then they're hitting on sevens for melee, which is one more hit. Okay, so two hits total by the American player, which would flip fully suppress and all that goodness and then kill him and then one unit is going to I'm going to flip this one. Oh, let me roll to see which one if it's a one or two it's the top unit three or four it's that bottom one roll 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 four so it's the bottom one so they're reduced 
and suppressed. And then that is all of the melee. So that's the route check and that's melee. And I think we did that right. If not, it's still pretty thematically interesting to see. Now I've got to move the Americans up to take advantage of the fallback lines for the Germans. That'll bring us the turn tracker to four. I'll clean the board and we'll come back. I'll shift the camera up so we can see where the new lines will be. All right, welcome back to the top of turn four. So this is my back line. They're about to push up, so hopefully everything will be in the camera up here. And I zoomed it in just a little bit more. And uh, so it is Americans. Yeah, and we got new new battle lines, if you will. Um, I do have the suppress. They're just yellow suppression now. Nobody's fully suppressed anymore. Suppression wore off of him. So I think I want to start here. I want to fully suppress that unit. Then I can advance in these guys because they are my close quarter experts. So we're going to go six minus two. It's a four. Let's see if we can get one level of suppression. It's an eight, so nope. Okay, and then one. Now these guys, they're, they're got a six to see. They're going to try. I'm going to go ahead and, and see if they activate. So they need to roll a 6 to activate. It's a 10. So nope, they said nope. We're staying put. I'm... I may have to forego a turn and just use them to try and fully suppress. Okay, this is what we're going to do. So they, they're good. They just have to roll a 4. Oh my goodness. Not today. Okay, so that right there puts us at three. It's a lot of stack balancing there. Okay, so that's three units. Gotta move the machine guns up. They're the ones that do all the heavy work. They get four movement points. So we're gonna go ahead and go one, two, three. I'm moving right there because I wanna be out of line of sight a little bit, but yet still move up at some point. Now this guy can go one, two, three, four. I guess I could have moved in here. Where was I? One, two, yeah. Let's do it. So that'd be four units done. Uh, I could attempt op fire, but I'd have to roll a one because that's a uh, proficiency is two. First I have to see if he activates. Then he's only got two, minus two for the stone building. Yeah, what are the odds that he'll roll a one? So far for the Germans, it's been very high, but we won't we won't risk it. So I'll go ahead and move this weapon team up. One, two, three, four. All right, Germans. Now Germans have op range of three, so all three are going to have to do something. They're fine with that. So first of all, he's going to see what he can do. Let's see if he activates, and then we'll make a decision with him. So he's got a roll of five. Rolls an eight, so he says no, 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 no. Leave me alone. Boo doo, boo boo. Do 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 do. Boo doo, boo doo, boo. All right, let's go. Let's check him first. So he's gonna activate on a five. Nope. Well, he's about to be used, so we'll just stick it like that. Okay, so he's going to fire here. So firepower of five minus two. They're now hitting on threes. He rolls a one. What are the odds that the German player would roll a one? Very good, apparently. Okay. That's my operations range of three for the Germans. That means it's all up to the Americans now. Which is cool, because we can move all the way up into these buildings, and we're golden. So we're going to do that. We're going to move. There's plenty here. They just sucked at rolling. So we're going to go one, two, three. <sighs> yeah, that's what we'll do. Boom. And we're going to move you. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, 
four, five movement points. Uh, I really don't want to do anything with the wounded guy except put op fire on him. I don't know why, because he can sh shoot. All right, let's move up here. Maybe he can draw fire. Okay. And we would check for routing. This was a very quick turn. We're just moving up. Oh, they all could have assault fired. Oh, snap. Because I know someone's asking, why didn't you have them assault fire? And I didn't check to see if he passed his morale. I just assumed that he would. Um, let's roll for the American here. Because he might not be able to. If I roll a 10. Okay, so because I just now remembered assault fire, I need to write down a little piece of paper that says, don't forget to assault fire, dummy, because that I could have suppressed them. So he's going to move up, and he he passed his morale. He's going to assault fire. He's got proficiency of 6, minus 2 for the stone building. If he hits this, they all gain a level of suppression. Dang it. Okay, that's fine. I could go back and retcon and have those two units check, but I th think, yes, let's do that. Um, I'll tell you why, uh, because I feel like it. One of them, yes, does, and then the other guy, because that would make the one guy fully suppressed and the other guy just one suppressed. Let's see what he does. That's a one. Okay, so... What that does for me is amazing, amazing, um, because now they're both fully suppressed, because the Americans came up, because see, that would have been a three, I, I rolled a three and a one, so that did get suppression on both of them. Um, yeah, okay, is that wrong of me to do? Maybe, but I did it, I did it. Okay, so that would actually take us now to checking for route. And none of them have to route because nobody's in the open. Nobody is adjacent. They're all in buildings. So the routing is fine. Uh, then we would check for melee, and there is none. Now we'll do recovery. So that was a quick turn. So let me pause this, clean up, and we'll come back to turn five. Okay, it's zooming in more. So hopefully you all can see this now really, really well. So what we've got now is the Americans have pushed up onto this line of houses and now they're just going to suppress and then charge across and hopefully jump into some melee and get some work done. Um, where's my American weapon team? So let's see here. Laser pointer, please. You can fire there. And you can fire there safely. So that's going to be the opening moves for the American player. So what we have here is 8 proficiency, minus 2 for the stone. So they're going to suppress on a 6. Rolls a 4. Uh, so that puts one level of suppression. Boop. Then... Let's just check this weapon team straight across. That was one unit. Uh, so again, six, well within his 14 range. Six, which is enough, again, to fully suppress. That is the magic right there, right? Um, but where'd you come from? Oh, you, I was just looking for the weapon team. Got it, got it. Uh, but as you've seen, the German player can tenaciously roll ones, which has been very beneficial to them. But let's see how it works out this time. We're going to fire. I'm going to attempt to add one more full suppression here. So first of all, they got to see if they activate. They need to roll a nine or less. You know what? I think I can just safely move this map now that we're off of it. Okay, cool. Here we go. Two. So they activate and they're firing across the road. So they have a six proficiency, minus two for the stone building. They're going to hit on a four. They miss. So I'm trying to soften that up a little bit before I run people in. 
preferably that guy because he's got bonus to melee. So we're going to try to have them shoot. So they need to hit on a four. Dang it. Dang it. I'm not getting that full suppression. And I think that's everybody. One, two, three, four, five. They didn't go. That's still only four. I'm going to try to have them suppress. So first of all, let's see if they activate. That will be number five. So he does, and he needs to roll a four. He does. Okay, fully suppressed. That was the goal here. And that will severely limit German operations because their men are hunkered down now. And you get a used... And on the bottom because you're the one that did something. All right, so the German player, if he wants to do something, he's got to roll a one to activate. He gets a seven. All right, and then same thing here. If they want to, they both need a one. So let's go, I'm just gonna, I'm just putting them in the open here like this so I can check them. Let's check the reduced guy. Let's see if he activates on a one. Oh, I was rolling the die 8. Let me make sure I'm rolling the die 10 here. Nope. And then the other fully suppressed guy needs a 1 to do something. Nope. <clears throat> I can only imagine how many times I've rolled that die 8 instead of the die 10. So I'm going to use that no more. So if I want to track caps, I'm going to use this fancy die 6 that comes out of the Heroes of Stalingrad. So we'll use that to track orders of operation. All right, but Germans are done. So it swings back to the Americans. We're going to make the attempt to assault now. We're going to cross the road. Scary, but we're going to cross the road. One. Final op fire. Let's see. Not rolling a die eight. I'm rolling a die 10 and they will activate on a one. <clears throat> and they're in. Boy, I swear it landed on a one for like a second. I was like, are you kidding? <sighs> Hard to defeat fascism if I'm rolling ones all the time. But we're going to see if I can pop in a unit to draw all their op fire. Okay, so they're both going to attempt final op fire. But they have to roll ones to activate. So I'm going to try the wounded guy first. He rolls a five. The not wounded guy next. Well, was eight. Okay, so they both tried to activate for final op fire and they failed. And now we're in. So what I'm going to do now is just stack them. They are both reduced. Got a dude in. And there, that's done. Then my fancy. Let's do, I'm going to move a... I'm going to move a fancy one in here. One, two, three, four. No op fire because he's got Americans in with them, so they are occupied. But I definitely want to have backup. And then I'm going to move... Um, he's got a fancy one, so I'm going to move one here. And he could reach. One, two, three, four, five. I cannot stack any more people in there because I've got my two, two allies. They're, they're two and two. So he's going to, if he does anything, right, he's going to op fire. He could do used. According to the rules, you could put used. But um, as someone pointed out, I think Brendan pointed out, just put op fire because if something were to change at some point, not that it'll change here, but op fire lets you the opportunity to op fire. If this was earlier in the turn, you could op fire at somebody if that situation occurred. Um, so just get in the use, just get used to the habit of putting op fire on people that aren't going to do anything. That way there's a possibility they could. Because if they final op fire, they get a plus one because they were marked for op fire. They were ready for it. Okay, so with that in mind, let's check for routing. Now, my Americans, no routing this time. They are all fresh, ready to fight. So they have 10, so they... No routing needed for them. Even my wounded guy with a nine. He's not in the open to anybody not in melee. So they are good. Woof. Uh, then we check for the Germans. Now, that is where we try to do full suppression. 
Um, so they're going to check. If they fail, they're eliminated. But if he rolls a 1, he stays to fight. 8. So he's eliminated. He said that's too many Americans. Okay, then over here, both of these guys are fully suppressed. So we'll check the wounded guy first. 2, uh, but he is eliminated. And finally, <clears throat> let's see if that German unit... If they roll a one, they stay and fight. Nope, and they're out. And that was the end of that turn. Woof, all right, that went, that did go better than I thought. And actually the German player held out a lot better than I thought. Now they called that scenario easy peasy. So part of me is thinking that was supposed to be, again, maybe a, a lopsided I'm not sure how balanced you would call that but the Americans again we pushed up we actually had them fall back to another row of houses but we were able to again continue that doctrine of suppression and then move in for close combat however that did backfire a couple times on the Americans where they they did lose some folks because the American or the uh, German defenders were able to rally themselves just enough to really pour on some fire and I guess hitting units in the open adjacent is devastating and it, it was um, so but that was some lucky lucky rolls for the German player so again I think that really shows the importance of suppression suppress your units suppress 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 um, a couple turns, it sounds like you usually, it, it does, it's like just setting up the scene. You don't just immediately roll in and take them out and melee. You've got to spend a couple turns really um, softening targets. I, I think when I used to play, I really underestimated the importance of suppression. And I was not used to the idea that you really have to move into assault. A lot of games that I play like this you're fine to just shoot back and forth because your combat alone can cause casualties. Here, in this particular scenario with the stone buildings, um, it wasn't allowing me to really inflict a lot of casualties just off of combat rolls. So it really emphasized the importance of suppression and then moving forward to try and, you know, you're suppressing by putting down covering fire and then allowing elements to move up. Um, so again, Thoroughly enjoyable scenario, mostly because I won. But when you play solo, you always win. Uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. I, you know, if you watch this all the way to the end, I know a lot of people don't, but if you do watch this all the way to the end, I'm curious. Would you like to see more Band of Brothers? Or would you like me to switch gears and go to Fighting Formations? I've got the Kharkov expansion. I did a review on it, but I haven't actually played. And it's actually a really hard game, I think, to play solo. But if you're interested, I could um, do a fighting formations. And the Kharkov scenarios are a little bit smaller. And so I think fewer units. You could probably play reasonably in an hour or two, I think, one of those Kharkov scenarios. So if you're interested, let me know. Do you want more Band of Brothers? Or would you like me to switch gears and try a for fighting formation? All right, I'll leave that up to you. If you watched all the way through, you get a vote. All right, otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Again, still thoroughly enjoyable game. But there are lots and lots of scenarios for Bands of Brothers. So really, just playing through the first few scenarios is just the tip of the iceberg to what's coming up. Um, plus, I haven't even hit vehicles, so I I'm okay with that. Just so far, all infantry action has been thoroughly enjoyable for me. All right, but other than that, I will talk to you all later. Thanks a lot. Bye.